Hello everyone and welcome back to the sessions on strategic financial management. Friends, in this class let us talk about MSME that is micro, small and medium enterprises. So an interesting fact about small and medium enterprises is that these are considered to be a backbone of the nation's economy and the reason is quite obvious. These small and medium enterprises they constitute a substantial part of the industrial production in any country and I am particularly talking about developing countries. So because these small and medium enterprises they have such major contribution towards the industrial production of that country you would find that they significantly contribute to two more aspects that is the GDP of the country gross domestic product and the exports made by the country. So you look into all the developing countries their exports they are contributed substantially from the MSME sector. So as is the case with all developing countries across the world the similar case is with India. So in India as well you would find uh, MSME sector having such a great importance and that is why government of India is launching schemes after schemes just for one reason to promote MSME sector in India. Now friends apart from all this do you know one more thing one big reason why MSME sector has a great importance in these developing countries and hence in India as well MSME sector is considered to provide a big employment opportunity. You look into the population of the developing countries, a big part of the population of developing countries they are dependent on MSME sector of that country for their employment and providing employment itself is one big benefit of this MSME sector. So today we can say all developing countries for their economic growth, for their economic development they are dependent upon MSME sector. So friends uh, let us bring some factual data for having much better understanding and particularly the case in India. So I would want your attention on the screen let me share something important with you. As I have just mentioned that MSMEs are considered as backbone of nation's economy they constitute the bulk of the industrial base of the nation they contribute significantly to the nation's exports and GDP. So we were talking about the position of MSMEs in India let us look into this factual data MSMEs in India they contribute 8% of country's GDP secondly they have contribution towards 45% of the manufacturers output and 40% of our exports and friends this data what we have gathered is obviously from the sector which is a formal sector where the information is available. If you look into the informal sector you still have something available but definitely we are not considering that what we have is this data as of now available and with respect to employment MSMEs in India these provide employment to above 6 crore people through 2.6 crore enterprises. So MSME sector is therefore considered as largest generator of employment in India. For all these reasons it is quite obvious that the government of India would want to have continued advantage of the presence of MSME and rather enhancing this advantage enhancing this available opportunity and that is why in the year 2006 MSME Development Act was enacted with one sole objective promotion and development of MSMEs in India. So what was the role of this act and how this act has led to promotion and development of MSMEs let us even look into that. So as I have just mentioned the government of India has enacted the MSME Development Act 2006 for facilitating 
the promotion and development of msmes and for the following matters remove impediments due to multiple laws introduce statutory consultative and recommendatory bodies in msme policies statutory registration procedures of msmes statutory basis for purchase preference and credit policies and improve realization of payments of msmes so the important conclusions that we can pick from whatever is given over here we would say just imagine that there are multiple laws which a small enterprise has to comply with so much of compliance requirement the enterprise will focus more on compliance and less on their business just to have uninterrupted progress and development of the small businesses the compliances which were required by multiple laws have been brought down to just one act msme development act whatever legal formalities are required whatever compliances are required are mentioned within the act these small and medium enterprises are therefore under no obligation to perform compliances beyond the requirement of this act but provided these enterprises should be classified into msme sector now next big thing these enterprises so that they can function smoothly the act also lays down selection and appointment of various bodies that would look after whether the requirement of act the promotional and developmental activities or the facilities that is to be provided for msme growth whether it is being implemented or not to check this various bodies will be appointed and the bodies will be appointed as per the requirements of the act and then the statutory registration procedure where the objective is to simplify the procedure so that statutory registration procedure has also been laid down by msme development act however a fundamental question that arises now is what are msmes in accordance with the msme development act 2006 msmes are classified in two classes first of all manufacturing enterprises and then service enterprises so what we are trying to understand over here whether an enterprise will fall into this category of msme or not there has to be certain criteria so first of all msme development act has laid down a criteria now that criteria is different for manufacturing units and the criteria is different for the service rendering entities so friends with respect to manufacturing units whether they are micro small or medium enterprises depends upon how much money they have invested in plant and machinery so investment in plant and machinery becomes the fundamental base for identification of msme in manufacturing category and now with respect to service rendering industries because they will not have too much of plant and machinery the criteria is based on the amount of money invested in the equipments so how much money you have invested in equipments being a service rendering enterprise that will decide whether it will fall under micro small or medium enterprise so friends what we need to understand is once these criteria are met then only you are eligible to register yourself under msme development act in other words to take the advantage of these facilities available for micro small and medium enterprises it is compulsory that you should fall within this criteria if your investments in plant and machinery if it is manufacturing unit and your investments in uh, equipments if it is falling into service rendering type of units if it is exceeding the given limits then you will not be able to obtain the benefits of msmes whatever benefits are provided to msmes you will have to forego those benefits just to ensure that these benefits should be restricted only to msmes the criteria has been laid down 
so let us look into details about the same let us first take the case of manufacturing enterprises now what are manufacturing enterprises the enterprises engaged in the manufacture or production of goods or employing plant and machinery in the process of value addition to the final product the manufacturing enterprises are defined in terms of investment in plant and machinery so it is very important for you to understand how much money is invested in plant and machinery that will decide with respect to a manufacturing enterprise whether it is going to be micro small or medium enterprise then coming to service enterprises the enterprises engaged in providing or rendering services and are defined in terms of investments in equipment that means if that is a service rendering enterprise whether it will be small medium or micro enterprise will depend upon the amount of money invested in the equipments so let us try to look into those criteria in details and beginning with manufacturing sector so investment limits for manufacturing sector if we define the enterprises and the investment in plant and machinery can be tabulated this way micro enterprise their investment in plant and machinery does not exceed rupees 25 lakhs so this is the criteria if the investment is going beyond 25 lakhs it will not be micro enterprise for micro enterprise the investment in plant and machinery must be within the limit of rupees 25 lakhs if it is exceeding 25 lakhs it will come under small enterprise category where the investment is more than 25 lakhs but does not exceed rupees 5 crores and if it exceeds 5 crores it would come under medium enterprise and for medium enterprises the limit is more than rupees 5 crore of investment in plant and machinery but it does not exceed rupees 10 crores so what would happen if the investment in plant and machinery exceeds 10 crores if it exceeds this limit of 10 crores the enterprise cannot call itself as a msme unit and will be liable for deregistration from msme category now this was all about manufacturing sector let us look into the service sector so investment limits for service sector can be tabulated this way enterprises and investments in equipments if it is a micro enterprise the investment in equipment does not exceed rupees 10 lakh so rupees 10 lakh is the limit for micro enterprises if the investment in equipments exceed rupees 10 lakh it will come in the category of small enterprises where the small enterprises limits are more than 10 lakhs of investments in equipments but such investment does not exceed rupees 2 crores if it exceeds rupees 2 crores it will come under medium enterprises but where the maximum investment should not exceed rupees 5 crores so these are the limits for identifying whether the enterprise will be micro small or medium enterprises with respect to service sector so one common note about msmes if the investment limit in a medium enterprise exceeds the permissible limit it will become liable for deregistration and would not be eligible for preferred treatment reserved for the msmes all right let us proceed ahead and talk about the steps involved in setting up msmes this begins with project selection followed by technology and machinery and further followed by arranging finance so let us first crack these first three steps project selection is the beginning so when you would want to start up a small business obviously there has to be an idea in your mind as in how you would want to create value by producing something or by rendering some kind of service what exactly is your business plan so selection of project is the first stage once you have decided that what kind of business you would want to venture into you have to now decide what is the level of technology that you would want to implement so it may be say manufacturing some small consumer goods if you are manufacturing some small consumer goods say manufacturing bathing soaps but there what kind of technology that you would want to bring into picture 
आर यू जस्ट विलिंग टू कीप इट वेरी स्मॉल यूजिंग मिनिमल टेक्नोलॉजी एंड मोर ऑफ हैंडमेड वर्क और यू वुड वॉन्ट टू इन्वॉल्व बल्क मशीनरी यू नो हैवी मशीनरी टू प्रोड्यूस योर प्रोडक्ट दैट यू हैव प्लान वॉट काइंड ऑफ वॉट लेवल ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी यू हैव टू सिलेक्ट दैट इज द नेक्स्ट क्राइटेरिया एंड देन वॉट कम्स इज द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग अरेंजिंग फाइनेंस सो फ्रेंड्स अंडरस्टैंड your finance arrangement will first require you to decide how much money you want to invest and that depends upon your technology selection so once your technology selection is done what amount of money that you are required to invest in your business unit and that will be followed by how would you arrange this finance let us have a glimpse of the procedure ahead the fourth step is unit development that means once you have started arranging the finance you can start investing money and start developing the business unit then comes udyog aadhar memorandum in short uam i am going to talk about what is this udyog aadhar memorandum in detail little later so let us not talk about this as of now then what is needed next is approvals obviously you would want to seek approvals if you are you know venturing into some kind of products and you would also require clearances that is product specific clearances for example if you are looking for starting up a business in the field of pharmaceuticals that means you would want to manufacture drugs you would want to manufacture eatables you would want to manufacture firecrackers now you obviously need approvals and clearances with respect to these products you cannot just start making firecrackers you need a license to do that you cannot just start making drugs and medicines you need a license you need a pharmaceutical license for that so seeking these kind of approvals and product clearances becomes your next stage the last step that is involved over here is quality certification that is iso certifications so obviously in the competitive world that you are into you would want to have quality certifications about your products and services so that you stand chance to you know face competition from the bigger enterprises just for one big ground that your product is also a quality product anyway let us now talk about something that was pending that is something about udyog aadhar memorandum so what exactly is uam a one page simple registration form for online filing in the name of uam has been introduced the filing of uam can be done at this given link this one and now the salient features of uam that is udyog aadhar are registration is online and user friendly uam can be filed on self declaration basis no documentation required and there is absolutely no fee for filing so if you need to define in one line what is uam in simplest words it is a registration form for online filing and basically it is a registration form for an enterprise to get itself registered as msme all right proceeding ahead and talking about one major step that was arranging finance so like any other unit no msme unit can take off without monetary support this need for finance can be classified into following types long and medium term loans short term or working capital requirements risk capital i'm sure you know what is risk capital basically this is nothing but the venture capital financing seed capital or marginal money and bridge loans friends if you are you know stuck with the meaning of these terms you may refer to my other video which i have made on startup finance all these terms have been clarified over there in the startup finance video so therefore i am not talking about these type of loans over here moving ahead Financial assistance in India for MSME units is available from a variety of institutions the important ones are commercial regional rural or cooperative banks then you have 
SIDB, that is Small Industries Development Bank of India. And over here, the finance is available on refinance basis as well as on direct lending basis. Then you have SFCs and SIDCs, that is State Financial Corporations or State Industrial Development Corporations. Now the question is, for what reasons you may require different type of loans? Long and medium term loans are needed to fund purchase of land, construction of factory buildings or factory sheds and for purchase of machinery and equipment. And on the other side, the short term loans which are generally available from commercial banks are required for funding working capital. The commercial banks also sanction composite loan comprising of working capital and term loan up to a loan limit of rupees 1 crore. Now this composite loan could be simply utilized for long term or short term purposes where you need not specify how much money you are allocating to what asset. It is your internal matter. Alright friends, let us move ahead and look into MSME finance from the global perspective. So we were talking about uh, developing countries. So lots of Asian and African countries which are classified under the category of developing countries. They are facing one big problem. Continuous growth in the population. Now the growing population will obviously need more employment. So where would you look up to when you are seeking employment? So with what we have just understood MSME could be a big solution to this growing population problem. But friends, MSME itself faces a problem. That is what problem of finance. So if you look into growing population can be taken care by growth in MSME. But the growth in MSME is getting suppressed because of lack of finance available. So what happens? Big enterprises, they have more access to the loan facilities offered by commercial banks and institutions. On the other side, MSMEs, they literally struggle to arrange finances. And that is why one big objective of MSME Development Act is to provide appropriate finance to MSMEs in India. So friends, let us again talk about some factual data in this regard. Please pay attention on the screen. Let me share something important with you. Earlier we have already talked about one thing that MSMEs play a major role in most economies, particularly in developing countries. According to estimates, 600 million jobs will be needed in the next 15 years to absorb the growing global workforce, mainly in Asia and Africa. However, access to finance is a key constraint to MSME growth. Without it, Many MSMEs languish and stagnate. What we are trying to say that MSMEs they have little lesser access over the availability of capital. So they do not get loans as easy as bigger enterprises get. Because of this constraint, the growth of MSME is going to get affected. This is the big risk that we are facing. And now, there will be a gap. What gap? The need for capital is more and the availability of capital for MSME is less. Now this gap is not of a small amount. It is a substantial amount. It goes in trillions of dollars. Talking about factual data, SMEs are less likely to be able to secure bank loans than large firms. Instead, they rely on internal or personal funds to launch and initially run their enterprises. So 50% of formal SMEs do not have access to formal credit. The financing gap is even larger when micro and informal enterprises are taken into account. So friends over here be very clear with what do we mean by formal and informal. Formal entities are those which have got themselves registered under MSME Development Act and informal enterprises are those 
which have not got themselves registered under MSME Development Act. So if you consider only the formal enterprises, you have 50% of the enterprises who have lack of access to the credit. And if you count informal enterprises, see what happens. Overall, approximately 70% of all MSMEs in emerging markets lack access to credit. And if we count this gap, I have just mentioned the total credit gap for both formal and informal SMEs is as high as US dollar 2.6 trillion as of today. As a further information obtained from the World Bank, World Bank Group, that is WBG, it has identified that there are between 365 to 445 millions of MSMEs in the emerging markets, including both formal and informal. So the basic problem is how to resolve this problem of financing gap, how to bridge this gap. So in this regard, what World Bank does? A key area of the World Bank Group's work is to improve SME's access to finance and find innovative solutions to unlock sources of capital. Combining advisory and lending services to clients to increase the contribution that SMEs can make to the economy. So from one side when World Bank is taking all these innovative steps and measures, let us look into what is happening in India. MSME Development Act has therefore asked various rural and uh, regional banks to provide best possible credits to small and medium sized enterprises and not just this providing some or the other kind of export incentives from the side of government has also been one big objective so talking about export incentives the objective is clear that the government is seeking promotions of exports or in simple words export promotions now what are various schemes and steps taken for promoting exports through msmes let us have a look into that as well so talking about export promotion the capability of indian msme products to compete in international markets is reflected in its share of about 34 percent of national exports in case of items like ready-made garments leather goods processed foods engineering items the performance has been commendable in some cases like sports goods they account for 100 percent share to the total exports of the sector small scale sector has been accorded high priority in india's export promotion strategy let us move ahead and talk about CEDO, that is Small Industries Development Organization. The National MSME Development Agency for Formulating Policy for Development of Small Industries in India. Products of MSME exporters are displayed in international exhibitions free of cost under CEDO umbrella abroad with a view to rendering assistance to MSMEs in the field of exploring market potential, export promotion, participation in international trade fair exhibition, etc. Different promotional schemes are being implemented. Talking about export promotion scheme. Now this export promotion scheme comprises of four different aspects. Now this is something very important try to understand. First thing allowing Indian MSMEs to participate in international exhibitions. That means products of MSMEs are taken abroad for display in exhibitions over there and this is generally done free of cost or at a very very concessional cost to the MSME. Next thing, once the product has been displayed in the international exhibition level, second thing, Training the MSME units, that is providing training to them with respect to export packaging. What kind of export packaging is needed in today's time to face competition with the other exporters across the world 
बिकॉज नाउ यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट इंटरनेशनल ट्रेड यू हैव टू मैच इंटरनेशनल स्टैंडर्ड सो एक्सपोर्ट पैकेजिंग इज द नेक्स्ट ऑब्जेक्टिव एंड देर फॉर प्रोवाइडिंग ट्रेनिंग फॉर एक्सपोर्ट पैकेजिंग थर्ड थिंग इज हाउ टू मार्केट हाउ टू गो फॉर मार्केटिंग डेवलपमेंट एंड देर फॉर वॉट काइंड ऑफ मार्केट डेवलपमेंट असिस्टेंस कैन बी प्रोवाइडेड टू एम एस एम ईज हैज टू बी कंसिडर्ड एंड लास्टली द नेशनल अवार्ड फॉर क्वालिटी प्रोडक्ट्स नाउ प्रोवाइडिंग नेशनल अवार्ड फॉर क्वालिटी प्रोडक्ट्स इज ऑब्वियसली गोइंग टू गिव लॉट्स ऑफ मोटिवेशन एंड इंस्पिरेशन टू दी स्मॉल एंड मीडियम साइज एंटरप्राइजेस फॉर डेवलपिंग और प्रमोटिंग और प्रोड्यूसिंग एंड सप्लाइंग क्वालिटी प्रोडक्ट्स सो फ्रेंड्स दीज फोर एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ दिस स्कीम वॉट आई हैव जस्ट मैंशन let us look into the screen and let us try to elaborate each point in little details in this sequence the first is the participation in international exhibitions secondly training programs on packaging for exports third marketing development assistance that is mda scheme for msme exporters and lastly national award for quality products so let us discuss each of these in details first thing international exposure to msme products to give exposure to products of msmes which otherwise are not in a position to participate in the exhibitions or fairs at their own cost under the scheme exhibits of the selected export worthy units are displayed in the exhibition that provides opportunity to msmes in demonstrating their capabilities before the international community the next in the sequence is training programs on packaging for exports india faces formidable hurdle in meeting and matching the packaging requirements of her exportable products in the markets abroad the main objectives of the schemes are to generate much needed consciousness in the industry about the packaging problems of msme exporters to educate the entrepreneurs about the latest packaging techniques and designs of the packaging moving ahead the third thing in the sequence is marketing development assistance that is mda mda scheme for msme exporters the government of india will reimburse the 75% of air fare by economy class and 50% subsidy on space rent to general category of micro manufacturing enterprises now this percentage will go to 100% with respect to scst women enterprises and the entrepreneurs of northeastern region the total subsidy on air fare space rent and shipping cost of exhibits will be restricted to rupees 1.25 lakhs per unit for manufacturing enterprises or actual whichever is less now be clear this 1.25 lakhs per unit does not mean unit of product okay this 1.25 lakh is the limit for each entity now there are certain conditions to be fulfilled let us talk about those conditions any unit can avail of this facility once a year only so only once in a year this facility can be availed only 1% of the participating unit would be eligible for subsidy on air fare so you cannot take the entire team of your workers just 1% will be eligible for this subsidy the circulars are issued to director of the circulars are issued to the director for selection of manufacturing msmes whose products conforming to the international standards and quality one cedo officer will be deputed to each fair for coordination of msme india stall additional financial assistance also available under the scheme subject to conditions the fourth and the last in the sequence is national award for quality products the objectives of the scheme are as follows number 1 to encourage small scale industries to produce quality products conforming to international standards to propagate a culture of quality consciousness among a vast section of small scale manufacturing units 
to install a sense of confidence of small industry products in the minds of the domestic consumers and to enhance the image of Indian products in export market. Let us now talk about what are the benefits available to MSMEs under the scheme. So as per the scheme, it enables reservations of certain items for exclusive manufacture of MSMEs thereby protecting their interests. That means under the scheme what will happen? Certain items will be exclusively meant for manufacture by MSME units only. Bigger enterprises will not be allowed to manufacture certain products. Secondly, this policy helps in generating employment for the people and consequently enhances the standard of living. To encourage small scale units, SEZs that is special economic zones are required to allocate 10% space for small scale units. Under the MSME Act, protections are offered in relation to timely payment by buyers to MSMEs and assistance is also available in obtaining finance, help in marketing, technical guidance, training and technology, upgradation etc. Apart from all these benefits, there is one big additional benefit available to MSME with respect to listing of their stocks on a recognized stock exchange. So there will be big degree of benefit available to MSMEs if they go for listing but they have to also fulfill certain conditions you can say criteria for listing. So friends criteria for listings by MSMEs you need to understand these very well and the conditions given over there could appear to be little confusing conditions therefore I'll be explaining each point in details when I'm explaining try to pay attention and make sure that you don't get confused with the limits given in each criteria. So let us talk about criteria for MSME listing. So here we are talking about criteria for listing. First thing the company shall be incorporated under the Companies Act 2013. The post issue paid up capital shall be at least rupees 3 crores. Net worth of at least rupees 3 crore as per the latest audited financial results. Now friends, some people might think that what is the sense of this condition? Because if there is post issue paid up capital of 3 crores, anyway the net worth would be 3 crores. It's not like that. Just imagine that you definitely have paid up capital of rupees 3 crores and what if you have accumulated losses? What will happen? Your net worth will decline, correct? That means there should not be any accumulated losses. That means the net worth also has to be at least 3 crores. Not just this, the net tangible assets of at least rupees 3 crores as per the latest audited financial results. That means there is a condition of keeping this rupees 3 crore in net tangible assets. There should not be any intangible investments counted over here. Finally, the company must have track record of distributable profits in terms of Companies Act 2013 for at least two out of immediately preceding three financial years. Otherwise, net worth must be at least rupees 5 crores. Now try to understand this last condition very well. Apart from all these conditions mentioned over here, the company must have a track record of distributable profits for at least two out of the immediately three preceding financial years. If the company cannot have this track record of distributable profits, then its net worth should be at least five crores. That means if you are talking about keeping net worth of three crores, then there is a separate condition that you have to fulfill. That means you should have a track record of your distributable profits. If you don't have this track record, then this three crores of net worth will not do. You should have then at least five crores of net worth. That is the implication of these conditions or criteria for listing.